Thank you, Father. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Fellowship Church in White Plains, Maryland. Welcome, everybody that's online. And uh, we thank the Lord for you. I thank the Lord for you. And uh, thank you, Father, that we have this time together. And Lord, prepare our hearts to worship you, Father. And cover our hearts and our souls and our bodies with the blood of Jesus, Lord. And drive all sickness far from us. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of sickness going around right now. My, my household, a lot of people I work with. And uh, God, your word promises those who abide in you that the plague will not come near their tent. And Father, we just thank you for your grace. And we ask you to drive all sickness far from us and from everybody that's in the hearing of my voice right now, I pray that you would just move by your power and just drive all sickness from them as well and heal by your awesome, mighty hand. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, God. I will worship with all of my heart I will praise you with all of my strength and I will seek you all of my days I will follow I follow all of your ways. I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to worship. You alone, I worthy of my praise. I will bow down, I'll hail you as king, I will serve you, and I'll give you everything, and I will lift up oh, my eyes to your throne. And I will trust you, oh God, I will trust you alone. Yeah, I will give you all my worship, and I will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to worship, you alone are worthy of my praise. I will give you all my worship, and I will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to worship, and you alone are worthy of my praise. I will give you all my worship, and I will give you all my praise. You alone. I long to worship Are you alone, Jesus, worthy of my praise I will give you all my worship I will give you all my praise You alone, I long to worship You alone are worthy of my praise Worthy of my praise.
To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Be blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Be blessing and glory and honor and power forever. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb, unto you, Jesus. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb, unto the Lamb, to him who sits on the throne. And unto the Lamb, to him who sits on the throne, and unto the Lamb, be blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Be blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Ah, yeah. Be blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Be blessing and glory and honor and power forever to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Day and night, the living creatures, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, Lord of hosts, you are the Alpha and the Omega, who was and is and is to come, the first and the last, the Almighty. Let's sing that one more time to him. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Be blessing, be blessing and glory and honor and power forever, forever, forever. Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, open the eyes of our heart. God, I pray that God would open the eyes of your heart, that you can know him better. <laughs> what a prayer. And Father, I just, I just pray that for us tonight. We can know you better. We can see you in your glory. Mm. And understand the incomparably great power that you give to us who believe. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Now we're going to have a time of prayer.
if, uh, if you're ready, Mark. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. I heard that. Praise the Lord. Quick testimony. I took the boys Saturday evening. That's six-year-old Bryson and eight-year-old, well, Marcus will be eight years old next month. We went to the Cub Run Rec Center in Chantilly to their indoor swimming pool. Man, we had a time. It could have been just a little bit warmer for me, though. But Marcus kept dragging me into the lazy river section with the river flowing. And, and then Bryson would come running along the side of it and jump, kind of jump on top of us and splash us. So that was fun. I think, Lord, because I've been talking about it for some time, you know, we need to start looking for an indoor swimming pool instead of same old everything we do, same old go roller skating on Saturday, go roller skating on Sunday at the church. So thank you, Jesus, for that. We found that one pool, and I'm going to try another one, see if we find it a little bit warmer. So we need to get into our prayer list, and I want to start off on a somber note for the Marquise family and their young daughter, Ainsley, who has gone to be with the Lord. She was born again saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But she was a tender age of 16, and uh, we know that the family is grieving and we pray God's comfort to them. We, <clears throat> but we rejoice with those in heaven who have welcomed a new resident. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. George Cup has contacted the pastor that he's had a second heart attack. And uh, if you don't know George, he goes back to evangelizing and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ back to when my late brother Bruce was a young teenager going to his Friday <clears throat> evening. I'm trying to think of what they called that sun. Sun, I, I forget, but they had a nice little <clears throat> Bible study on Friday evenings. George Cup leading. And uh, <laughs> I remember my brother, this was before I got saved, my older brother Bruce, he was, uh, he was getting pretty fired up and trying to lead me to the Lord. And I was still trying to sow some wild oats. <clears throat> so thank you for George, Lord. We do pray that you'll strengthen and heal his heart. And that uh, we praise you, Lord. You know the number of his days, like you know the numbers of hairs on his head. <clears throat> Am I getting a little reverb here, Steve? A little echo? Now let's see here. <clears throat> Chloe's baby, Malachi. Malachi? Does that sound right? Malik. Malik. Malik had a very high temperature. 105. That, that's not good. We do pray your healing hand on Malik's comfort for Chloe. Thank you and praise you, Lord, for empowering that young child's immune system. <clears throat> and let's see. Um, I have some friends at church, John and Debbie. Burgers, and they have an adopted daughter who's about seven years, Janie. Pray for Janie. She's doing well. She was a little ill a couple weeks ago, but she's doing well now. And uh, she has a friend about the same age, name of Briar. And I'm going to lift up Briar in prayer. Briar is, is one of those youths that's kind of getting passed around <clears throat> because her parents are not <clears throat> capable in their current lifestyle of maintaining the parental responsibilities and not pointing any fingers. <clears throat> when I got my first 13 months of sobriety, it was in the prison in Jessup, and I had to leave my daughters with my mom and dad. But for them, they'd have been in the foster home. Thank you, Father, that you gave me another opportunity to pick up the ball, and I've been running with it ever since, by your honor, by your grace and, and mercy. 
So we need to jump into our prayer list. Brenda Sears has, has had a, a, a bad headache and she's got some COVID issues. And we're praying that God quickly deliver her of that, of those uh, uh, ailments from, from COVID. And uh, thank you for, for that, Father. Uh, we're gonna go into our prayer list now. <clears throat> and let's see. I have a couple add-ons, but I'm gonna get back to them. Uh, Kimberly Harris. And where these I read off, and I always like to, to say that, you know, we might be reading some of the same names over and again, but we're continuing that God has been answering prayer, and sometimes he's answering incrementally, incrementally, and uh, whatever their need is, physical healing, emotional encouragement, relational healings, and that kind of thing, housing, health maintenance. Father, we're praying that you cover these things for all these as we read their names, Betty Step the Kocheski family, Charles and the Newman family, Doria Hardesty, Ginger, and comma, A.J. Conigan, Brenda Greer, the Melberg family, Rose Younger, Jim Bice Sr., Marissa Crown, Brandon Baldwin, Katina Mattingly, Maria O'Connor, Joseph, comma, Kelly and family, <coughs> Maria Jones and son Chuck Jones, Joseph Owens, Tom Flaherty, Donna Harris is with us this evening, <clears throat> Paul Mattingly, Helen Cooper, Jeremy and Amy Clemmy, Vincent James Jr. and family, Al and Mary Jane Mills, Pastor Gary Snyder, Pam Hooper, Jeremy and Cass Heath, Ike Remo, new baby boy in the Remo family. Yes. Uh, Renee Miller, Brian Roberts, and Brooklyn, comma, Tyler, Glenda Verlies, and uh, her dad, Greg, Kelly Covington. And <clears throat> that brings us halfway through. <clears throat> Garnett Anderson and her son, Brian, Angelo and Cheryl Farrer, the Larkin family, Melissa Seacrest, Debbie Boer, Ken and Lorraine Mahan, Dale Hay, Dale Hay, Terry Apperson, Ashley Enstrom and her son, Aiden, Jerry and Linda Muchow, Josh Bozeman, Jean Mathail, Kathy Saul, Kim Belusi, Tom Watson, Doris Mattingly, Caleb Bailey, and I always like to stop there and pray for all those who are incarcerated. Father, we do cry out and pray for your mercy, for an early release, if it is your will. We pray for your comfort of your Holy Spirit. And I do know from personal experience, Lord, in that lonely <coughs> uh, cell, being away from home and uh, Contact with family and loved ones is kind of sparse, so we just pray for Kay Caleb Bailey as well as Michelle Park and Cindy Levering and anyone else that we might be mindful of. James Sherbert, Jesse Gilroy, Brenda Boyd, Robin McDonough, Carol DeHaven, Becky Cheney, Carolyn Beeman, Bill and Claudette McLaughlin, and Barbara Draham. Those in the military, Israel Remo, Tim Harmon, Ashley Baldo, Billy Heath, Anthony Baldo, Charlie Burke, and Brandon Hardesty. <clears throat> Two or three short verses to share with you. I was reading in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 from verse 16, and we're quoting King David and when he was praying to God after he had accumulated the building materials for the, for, the, for the temple, which is more often than not referred to as Solomon's temple. Uh, J. Vernon McGee thinks it's David's temple because he got all the things prepared for it. So here in prayer, <coughs> excuse me. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee in house for thine holy name, 
cometh of thine hand and is all thine own. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me and the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things, and now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the hearts of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee. Father, we do praise you, we give you the honor and glory due unto you. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your eternal promises, which are true. Your word is true. You, you, you never lie, you never forsake us. We thank you, Lord, for answering all these prayers giving comfort, peace, and healing. We do praise you, Father, and express our love to you. <clears throat> In Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, Amen, Brother Mark. do you want this one? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'll take that for prayer. Let's thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you being faithful. Looking at prayer list, we certainly need to pray for all of our people, and I I believe that God has blessed our ministry because of our prayer time uh, on Sunday morning and on Wednesday night, and uh, we definitely have been blessed. I'm so thankful. And seeing people uh, uh, that should have passed still alive and doing well, I think of um, a dear friend of ours that did eventually go to heaven, and that is uh, Linda Landman. She uh, was in the hospital, and she called me, and uh, uh, we knew her daughter, who does come here, and uh, Crystal, and she uh, asked if I would come and visit her. And we went over there to visit her, and she said, Pastor, they tell me that I have lung cancer, and they also tell me that I have diabetes, and that they're going to have to take both of my legs off. And... Uh, I said to her, well, let's pray about it. And I, we prayed, and then I asked her if she knew the Lord. She said no, and I shared the gospel with her, the, the Romans road, and she bowed her head and asked Jesus to save her. And the blessing, that was on Wednesday. On Sunday, I couldn't believe my eyes. She come strolling down in her wheelchair in the middle of the church. I thought she was dying. I said, Linda, what's going on? She said, well, Pastor, uh, the doctors said that they made a mistake. I don't have lung cancer. That was at Savista. And then she said, and they also said that the medicine they gave me for my legs started to work. So she did not have to have her legs removed. And so she lived for several years after that. And we saw her husband get saved and, uh, and uh, saw the Lord do some great things. And when she was coming near the end of her time, we went in a bus and we went up to um, uh, Sight and Sound. And she was sitting up in front of me and she was a character. And she said, Marvin, when I die, I want you to do me one favor. I said, what's that? She said, don't be hard on my family. Don't be hard on my family. I said, Linda, I'm the preacher. You can't be telling the preacher what to do. But uh, she did tell me what to do, but I didn't listen to her. But we have some wonderful memories and seeing uh, God answer so many prayers down through the ages. The most amazing thing as a pastor is when we have someone that needs prayer, uh, maybe with a life-threatening problem, and we come up here and we have, say, the ladies or the men get around them and pray for them. We have seen such miracles in that area. Um, I think of uh, Louise Fusco, uh, who had several problems. We prayed for her. She didn't look like she was going to live. And God blessed her. And um, her life turned around physically. She started doing better. And... Uh, Years later, uh, when she died, she died because of a mistake that the doctors made putting a uh, defibrillator in her chest and it punctured somehow her heart is what caused her to die. But she lived uh, right across the street 
is uh, Joy Speech's house. And she had, she was amazing. Uh, she had uh, uh, diabetes real bad. She had a bad li uh, kidney. But she was such a woman of God. Every time we had a potluck, uh, Miss Speech would be in that kitchen. She would scrub, her, her ministry was scrubbing all the plates and all the knives, all the forks, all the utensils. She was there all the time. And then she was also in our uh, nursery. And I went up to John Hopkins to visit her one time. And they had just, uh, the, the doctor said, you know, you're in your 70s, but you work every day. And you have diabetes and you have, uh, and she would get the treatments. What do they call that for? Diabetes. I'm sorry. Dialysis. Dialysis. And uh, uh, the doctor said, we're, we're going to, I'm going to find you a kidney. And praise God, he found her a kidney. And he put the kidney in, but he didn't take either one of the two out. So she lived for years with two kidneys, uh, three kidneys. And it was, she was such a woman of God, and I had so much fun with her. What a joy. Uh, but she said to me, I went into Hopkins, intensive care. Are you ready for what, uh, uh, Miss, uh, well, I'm having trouble. Joy Speech said to me, she said, Pastor, listen, I'm going to be in this hospital. I probably won't be able to make it out in time to do my Sunday school nursery duty. She said, but if you can get somebody to fill in for me this Sunday, she said, I will take their place next Sunday. And I want to tell you, and I thought to myself, oh my, you, you are really confident that you're coming out of here. I didn't say that to her. I thought, wow, that's, that's, uh, that's confidence. That's believing in prayer. And sure enough, she was in the, the nursery the next Sunday. What a blessing. I have so many wonderful, joyful memories now that my 20 years here is coming up. Uh, next month, what a joy. I want to talk to you today a little bit about Wait a minute. I want to talk to you about the right subject. <laughs> I do declare. I do declare. And I'm declaring tonight. Oh, I want to give you one more story. Do you all mind? Um, I did a funeral. And I saw the Lord, the, who is invisible, I saw him work. Like, it was amazing. Uh, the funeral, I was asked to speak, but there was some confusion about this, about the denomination that would do the uh, funeral. We had a total of 45 minutes. One fellow would do the eulogy. He said, that's going to take me about 20 minutes. And then her, that person's girlfriend uh, said that she was going to speak about 15 minutes. And then there were about three or four friends that were supposed to speak. And I'm thinking, we only have 45 minutes. That leaves me zero. Uh, so, you know, you just pray and ask the Lord to help you. And this is what I want to tell you what happened. I said, Lord, help me. I said, I would like to brag on you a little bit. And, uh, and the eulogy, instead of being 20 minutes, went 10 minutes. And then the friend that was supposed to speak 15 minutes spoke about five minutes. And, that, and when everybody else was finished, I had 15 minutes. And I like to go at least 30 minutes at a funeral. I glanced over. Uh, all the time was up. And someone in the back of the funeral, when I got up to speak, was going like this. Like, hey, the party's over. And I want to tell you what happened. So uh, I spoke for just a few minutes. But I said, Lord, how am I going to fix this? I want to preach to these people. So I went uh, in a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes of the message. And I had faith. I was trusting God. And I told the audience, uh, if you'll come to the gravesite, 
I'll tell you the only way you will ever see Wally again. I had no idea what God was doing. I didn't realize that there were 20 bikers out in front of the funeral home getting ready to escort his body. Uh, friends were out front and an honor guard, I guess a biker honor guard. And when we got to the graveyard, there were over 30 more bikers at the grave site. So the few people that were in the funeral home uh, was nothing compared to what was at when all the bikers met up there at the funeral home. And at the graveyard, I'm sorry. Uh, so the Lord wanted them all to hear the gospel, no doubt in my mind. As I stood there, I felt like God was saying, give them some hope. And uh, God met, met with us, and I will tell you, it was, I probably saw more people saved that day out there at that gravesite. Probably at least 35 people raised their hands for salvation. It was an amazing day. What a God we serve. Amen. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm so thrilled. I do declare that the Word of God tells us to declare uh, His uh, doings over and over again. And He has done some great things for me. I remember leading a man to Jesus years ago. And uh, uh, that was. Uh, Billy Howard, uh, wounded in Vietnam four times. I remember him? And uh, about six foot four, uh, his wife died about two years before. And the Bible, by the way, the Bible does say that, um, that the Lord is near to all those with a broken and contrite or heavy heart. The Lord is near them. That's why I absolutely love doing funerals. Because with a broken heart, we know God is near. And uh, uh, so we're going to look at a few verses here, but we're going to declare his doings among us. Isaiah chapter 12, starting with verse 4, we read, And in that day thou shalt say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted, sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. We read in Psalm uh, 911, sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. I love that. And that's what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to declare his doings amen. among his people. Can I get an amen? amen. We read uh, in the Gospel of John is where we're going to head. Uh, the scope of John's witnessing is wide. Uh, in the Gospel of John the Apostle, we have a factual written account of the life of Jesus. Uh, in the epistles, we are taught how to live with assurance of salvation. Boy, I like that. Uh, I like, uh, uh, what is it, um, 511? Uh, 1 John 5, 11. Do you all mind if I go over there? I'm just excited. All right. 1 John 5, 11 says, probably most of you know it, and this is the record that God has given unto us eternal life. Don't you like that? He hath or has given, past tense, he hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. These things have I spoken unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have everlasting life. That verse meant so much to me. 
when we lost our little boy because I didn't know that you could know you had eternal life. But when we got in the Word, that, that, there it is right there, that you may know. Don't you like to know things? I really like to know things. Moving on. First uh, John 1, 1 says, That which was, I want to emphasize that word, was, was, was. Would you say that with me? Was. From the beginning, it was past tense from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life, Jesus. As far back as we can think beyond creation, back billions and trillions of years ago, out in eternity comes the Lord Jesus Christ. Way back there, again, he was already past tense, which I like. He is the Ancient of Days. He's John's Gospel. In John's Gospel, he is the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, not is the Word. Put plainly, Jesus comes out of all eternity to meet you and I. Can I get an amen? What a God we serve. Point number one today, John's witness about God's life for us. Life is the key to the theme of, the key theme of John. Uh, John 1.14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Love flows through John's witnessing about him. Point number two, we see John witnessed about God's love for us. No doubt about it, for God so loved the world. I wear that shirt my daughter got me, uh, John 3.16, a lot of you have seen it. I wear it about, I even wear it to sleep, okay? I love that shirt. And I've been going to a, a doctor out in uh, uh, Fredericksburg for about a year and a half. And I wore that shirt the other day when I went. He said, Pastor, he said, you really don't need to come see me anymore. He was giving me vitamin B12 shots for a while. And I said, you know, I think I'm just going to try some vitamin B12 gummies. They are really good. Can I get one more amen? They are good, and, he's, and, and my numbers went up so high, they said, you don't need your B12 shots anymore. But I'll never forget, I went into this office, and I'm telling you what, it was packed full of people. They're very organized in Virginia. And uh, I went in to see them, and I had my shirt on, John 3.16. And, uh, and he said, what is your name? I said, Pastor Marvin. He said, Oh, he said, okay, I knew you were probably a pastor. I said, why did you say that? He said, I saw your shirt. And he said, I saw it when you were coming into the building. And that really touched my heart. So now, you know, uh, Collins, Bailey, and, and Bill bring us in hats and different things. I've worn them to every truck stop that we went to. Three months. You wore the hats to every truck stop? Yeah, when we stopped, yeah. Did anybody comment on it? That's good. There you go. A billboard, a walking billboard. All right. So uh, John witnessed about God's love for us. 1 John 3, 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed on us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knows, knew him not. John is not saying we expect to be sons of God. But we are the sons of God. You who were once a child of the enemy, now adopted into the family of God. My son Tommy, you know, it's funny, as we grew up, um, people would always tell me uh, he was adopted, but they would always say, he looks just like you. It used to make me chuckle. You remember Randy growing up. And... Uh, and they would say, he laughs just like you. 
And that used to tickle me. And, uh, but he was adopted. Uh, we've been adopted or bought with a price. I like that. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. That is so important. If you're saved or born again, God the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, is living on the inside. And he can give you victory in the midst of your storms. You are bought with a price, it says in 1 Corinthians 6, 20. Brought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You have been bought with a price. Uh, I don't know why I think of this, but you're not in a grocery cart. God's not taking you up to the counter. He's not going to take you back out of the grocery cart, put you back on the shelf, because you've already been bought with a price. He won't put you back. In Matthew 4, Jesus called Peter and uh, Andrew, and then he called James and John, and they could not resist his love. Matthew 4.22 says, And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Jesus said, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. What a blessing. Um, I remember at a preaching conference and I was in like McDonald's or somewhere, maybe the Boogie Air King, and I was behind this car. And I could hear this guy cursing. And he had a bumper sticker on the back of the car about God's love. But he was cursing and smoking a cigar and cursing. And I thought, oh my goodness, that man needs help. Or he needs the Lord. Can I get an amen? amen. Listen, he said, I will make you fishers of men. Uh, that is a great challenge for us. We want to be a good witness for the Lord. And people want to hear it. And we can give them the words of life, those tracks. They're worth millions. I want to challenge you to take them. And it's just so much fun to give them out, to hear what people say. I just can't wait to hear what somebody's going to say next. You know what I mean? Listen, Jesus called them, and he's calling us today. Uh, to a sold-out, surrendered life for him. No sidestepping. I used to sidestep. No setting on the fence. Let's go all the way. The Apostle John tells us to declare it and to share it. A lot of people, I think, have gotten too smart. They think in the Word. They need to be going back to declaring and sharing. We need to be telling the Gospel story. Every person you meet, every person you see is going to die one day and go to heaven or to hell. And we want to reach them for the Lord Jesus. Amen. John witnessed the Lord's love in action. And so can we. Uh, let's become fishers of men. Are you ready? Listen up. Listen to these promises. Answer prayer. We see it every day. Um, Deuteronomy 31, 8. Randy, would you read that? Do you have your Bible there? No? Does somebody have their Bible? Uh, Deuteronomy 31, 8. And we see you... <laughs> I do that all the time. Isn't that a great verse? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Bruni. Thank you for being so alert. <laughs> Listen up. Listen to these. That's a, those are great promises right there. And we see answered prayer. We were talking about that earlier. Uh, George Cup. I told you, George Cup had uh, a heart attack, I think, last night. He called me yesterday late. And uh, I'll never forget, his son was in an automobile accident. His, George Cup is in the Washington, D.C. Boxing Hall of Fame. You knew that. He went in the same uh, day or night that Sugar Ray Leonard went in, the Washington, D.C. Boxing Hall of Fame. He was tough. 
But his son was, they say, a better boxer than him. Yeah. And he was on his motorcycle, and he was flying with a man on the back. And he hit a telephone pole. And the guide wire cut his friend directly in half that was behind him. And George Cup Jr. went straight into the house in between the two Joyce's and landed on the floor in the living room of this man's house. The man was watching TV, and there's George Cup's son laying on the floor. He went right through the house. That's the speed he was going. But he was very strong. When they got him to the hospital, they started working on him. And they told George he would be brain dead. So there's not going to be any hope. But George Cup, who was a man of faith, a man of God, he went into that hospital every day. And he read the word of God out loud to his son in that uh, uh, unconscious state, you might say. And about two weeks later, his mind started coming back. We thought he was brain dead. And there is healing in the Word. Amen. That's how powerful this book is. This book is alive. Be careful. Amen? Moving on. So we see uh, the promises. He goes before us, that verse. To a lost person, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing like giving to a lost person God's Word. Isaiah 55, 11, thy word shall not come back unto me void. Why? Because they are life-changing. I had a wonderful time with uh, my brother right here, Vince, and he was telling me about his life yesterday and, and how he started coming to our church and, and started coming to the Bible studies at the Jude House and how he had, had nailed down salvation. He knows he's saved. What a blessing. Amen. Majid Zargar, I don't know if I mentioned him a while back or not. A dear friend of my wife and I. I was in the motor, my old motorhome studying for Bible study one night. Um, some of the first years of our Bible study at home. And this guy come walking up my driveway and I opened the motorhome door up. That's where I go for peace and quiet back in that, those days. And I said, can I help you? He said, yeah. I said, come on in. So he got in the motorhome. He told me his name, Majid Zargar. You don't know that name. I've heard the story. But Majid, we talked. He said, um, at Maryland University, he said, I, uh, uh, I'm trying to work my way through college. And so he was selling aluminum siding and vinyl and roofing. And uh, so we talked a while. I said, Majid, he was from Iran. I said, do you have a peace in your heart? He said, Marvin, I have no peace. And I don't usually pray like this. I said, Majid, do you mind if I pray for you? He said, no, go ahead. So I prayed. I said, Lord, I just pray that you'll give Majid the peace in his heart like I have in mine someday. And I said, and I also pray that you'll give him the best night he's ever had in business. I don't usually pray like that, but I did. The next day, Majid called me. And he said, Mr. Harris, last night I had the best night I've ever had in business. And so I invited him to come to church. So he started coming to church, coming out to our house. And we had the best time with Majid. And he got saved. And he said, you know, my brother said he came to the U.S. He said he knew there was something different about the people here. He said, but he just couldn't put his finger on it. And he went back to Iran. That was his oldest brother. And uh, Majid went on to finish college, and he got his doctorate in electrical engineering, which is quite an accomplishment. But then he got a job in Chicago. I'll never forget, I've shared this before, but uh, we would go out, and we would meet some people, and he was so excited. He'd say, instead of saying born again, he couldn't get the B right. He'd say, I got worn again. I thought, you got worn again? What happened? He meant to say born again. But uh, uh, he, uh, I, I haven't, that's been like 30 some years ago. Well, I talked to him just recently, maybe about five years ago. We went to his wedding. By the way, in Iran, your mom and dad pick your wife. 
And I thought, oh my goodness. And he had never seen her till the wedding night. Well, you were with us, weren't you, Donna? And she was beautiful. And I was very happy for Majid. And uh, today he owns a couple companies. Uh, he had this job. Imagine this job. He would go into all of our nuclear power plants and he would redesign the power systems running our nuclear power plants. Today, he and his son have different companies, and um, he, they work together with uh, uh, high-tech equipment. He goes into countries like our, uh, the Arab areas and uh, different places where we sell high-tech uh, airplanes and all that kind of thing. And he makes sure that their buildings that house our um, uh, parts and everything for these jets and everything else are protected so the enemy can't get into them. What a blessing. Uh, what a joy. Majid Zargar, moving on. So God uh, goes before us. Um, I've told you about Dr. K before. I won't bore you with him. Um, promise number two I gave you. Promise number three is, I guess, that his word will not come back void. It's life-changing. Promise number four, John 10.10, 10, For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10.13, For there, where there is... For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call on him. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We want to make sure we're saved. Amen. John watched the Lord uh, and watched the Lord's love for the woman at the well. That's an amazing story there. And John witnessed the Lord's love for the woman taken in adultery. Watching Jesus, John saw God's love in action, no doubt about it. And so can we. Uh, point number three again, John witnessed about our love for others. 1 John three fourteen, we read, for we know we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. I uh, like um, verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer shall enter eternal life abiding in him. Verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us that we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso, but whoso hath this world's good and seeth a brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. And in deep, let me try that again. But in deed and in truth. God tells us in Matthew 5.44, to love our enemies. Bless those that curse you. Do good to them that despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. No doubt, we must be kind. We must be caring to everybody. Can I get an amen on that? I always like to tell that story about Job. When he prayed for his three friends that had done him wrong, God did not bless him till he prayed for those three people that had done him wrong. Some had lied about him. But God did not bless Job until he prayed for them. And when he did, the Bible says, then God blessed Job with twice as much as he had before. We must be kind. We must be caring. We ought to be willing to lay down our lives for the brethren. Lieutenant Cleve McClary, I'll never forget him. Uh, told the story of a 16-year-old girl uh, that um, 
the communists had overran this country and went into their church. And the, the soldiers said, I want you all to come out of the back of the, house, of the church and spit on the picture of Jesus and move off to the right. And so the first person was actually one of the founders of the church. He spit on the picture and moved off to the right. The third was, uh, was one of the deacons in that church, spit on the picture of Jesus, moved off to the right. And the third was another, a lifelong member, spit on the picture of Jesus, moved off to the right. The fourth was a little 16-year-old girl. And they said that she dropped to her knees and picked up that picture that they'd taken off the back wall and held it to her breast. And she said, I'll die first. And that touched the hearts of those communist leaders. And three shouts were fired that day. The three that denied the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, first, 2 Peter 1.4, the term translated partakers is from the same Greek word, root word, that is translated fellowship. Jesus took on the nature of man that by faith we may receive the very nature of God. 1 John 1 3 and 4 says, That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. You know, that's so important to me. I want Christians to have some joy. I want to see people praising and excited that this, not, this is not all there is. We're going to have a new life on the other side. Can I get an amen? You and I can fellowship with God. He tells us in Revelation that he's going to be living with us. I think of when I grew up on my little street that we lived on, how we knew everybody. Imagine Jesus is going to be living with us. What a God we serve. Can I get an amen? amen? Listen, Paul says in Romans 8, 17, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that you suffer with him, that you may also be glorified together. Listen, John witnessed God's life for us. He witnessed about God's love. John witnessed about our love for others. Point number four, John witnessed about the greatest example of love. First John 4, starting with verse 10. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his own son to be a propitiation for our sins or a substitute for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Isn't that so important? Uh, if you get anything out of this today, propitiation is something God does to make it possible for men to be forgiven. God is light, so therefore he must uphold his holy law, and God is also love. Um, and therefore he wants to forgive sinners. How can God forgive sinners and still be consistent with his holy nature? The answer is the cross. Jesus became sin who knew no sin for us. God's love is proclaimed in the word and proved at the cross. But I will tell you this, it gets deeper. God's love is perfected in us, not in angels, but us, sinners saved by grace. I remember my first confrontation with some Christians. We went to uh, West Virginia to visit my dad's family. And I was probably five or six years old. I remember this like it was yesterday. And uh, uh, Elmer and Ruth. And all they talked about was Jesus all the time. And I said to mom, I said, mom, does Jesus live in this house? I was being serious. Every, that's all they talked about was Jesus. And I'm sure my dad was rolling his eyes 
um, thinking that they might have been fanatics, but I'm so thankful that they weren't fanatics, that they knew Jesus and they loved him. When you got saved, God the Holy Spirit came to take up permanent residency in you. Your body, again, we mentioned is the temple of the Holy God. Amen. Amen. I want to close with a couple of examples. Dr. G. Campbell Morgan, the famous preacher, had five sons. All of them became ministers of the gospel. One day a visitor uh, in their home dared to ask a personal question. He said, which one of you six is the best preacher? Of course, Mrs. Campbell Morgan had never preached a formal sermon in a church. But her life was a constant sermon and one of the love of God. The life of a Christian who abides in God's love is a potent witness for God in this world. All five of his, uh, six of the, the family boys in that church and their husband, they all said, who's the best preacher? Mama. Mama. that good? Men cannot see God, but they can see his love moving in us to deeds for helpless, helpfulness, and for kindness. A Salvation Army worker found a woman alone on the street and invited her to come into the chapel for help. But the woman refused to move. The worker assured her, we love you and want to help you. God loves you. Jesus died for you. But the woman wouldn't budge. As if on divine impulse, the young lady from the Salvation Army leaned over and kissed the woman on her cheek, taking her into her arms. And the woman began to sob like a child and was led to the chapel where she ultimately trusted Christ. You told me that God loved me, she said, but it wasn't till you showed me that God loved me that I wanted to be saved. Jesus did not simply preach the love of God. He proved it by giving his life on that cross. He expects his followers to do likewise. If we abide in Christ and will abide in his love, if we will abide in his love, we must share this love with others. Let's declare his doing out here in this world. Can I get an amen? amen? Thank you all so much for listening tonight. And let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for your word that is such an encouraging tool. Uh, where would we be without your word? I pray your richest blessings uh, on our people tonight, those that are watching on YouTube. Lord, I just uh, I thank you for your love. In your name, Lord Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you in the back, in the sound room. All right. Okay, Steve. Amen. Thank you, Jim, for the wonderful music. That was a blessing. Thank you, Mark, for the wonderful prayer time. Keep these prayers going this week. Remember... Remember Kathy, Saul, and her family, that little girl. Amen. Little boy. Okay, buddy. <laughs>